Hi guys, so um, I've just gone to pick up a package from the main guard house. Um, it's drinks. I ordered some drinks from a local company called Tapping Tapir. Um, why did I order drinks? To offer as Surkim uh, during my daily puja and sadhana. So I've been trying to support local businesses a little bit more, um, especially the local small businesses because some of them are really struggling to get through the MCO. Um, I've been listening to some documentaries online about the F&B and the restaurant industry and how um, the food and beverage industry is traditionally a very low margin industry and so they don't hold a lot of cash, they don't have very big cash reserves um, to get them through the like through times like this. Um, one particular interview that struck me quite deeply was an interview um, on Vice, I think, um, between the interviewer and David Chang from Momofuku. So he was saying that um, their staff payroll is something in the region of like 500,000. And he mentioned some statistic about how the Chipotle CEO um, said that they have access to 900 million US dollars um, that will help them to make it through to the end of July. But after that, um, they're going to run into trouble. And you know, that got me to thinking <clears throat> that a lot of these small businesses, they don't have access to the same kind of um, financial resources and loans and whatnot um, that the larger firms do. So they're going to be, they're really going to be struggling during this um, movement control order. I also saw online um, a local peanut butter company called Jobby. Um, they've asked, yeah, they've put out a call for help, um, asking people to place orders, a pre-order um, of up to 45 days um, because they need cash in order to make it through this uh, MCO. So um, they're giving people a discount for buying from them. But <clears throat> that's just the cases that we hear of. You know, that's just what makes it onto social media. That's just what makes it onto the news. And there must be plenty, plenty more businesses out there who are really struggling during this time. And um, I don't know, I guess during this MCO, we still have to buy our essential goods. We still have to buy, you know, we still shop online and all of that. I think it'd be good if we made more of an effort to shop from local businesses, support local businesses, um, support small business owners, because I'm pretty sure the corporations will be doing okay. You know, they'll have access to government funding. They've got pre-existing relationships with the banks. They'll be able to access funding. So um, do try and support local businesses at this time. So actually what I really wanted to talk about today was the topic of gratitude. And um, looking back on the last God, I can't even remember now. <laughs> Looking back on the last sort of like five weeks of the movement control order, um, yeah, I just I wanted to talk about gratitude and looking back on the last five weeks of the movement control order and what it's been like um, to live in KFR during that time. Um, well, for the first time ever, I've made it to nearly thirty days of daily filming. I never thought that I'll have so much to say, but um, and to be honest. <clears throat> Daily filming makes me quite uncomfortable. Um, I I have come to realize that a lot of people misconstrue this, but I'm actually quite introverted, so um, I don't really like appearing on camera. And um, yeah, I, I I might have you know a big mouth in that I have like strong opinions on things, but I don't really like appearing on camera. So um, making it to nearly thirty days of daily filming is quite a milestone for me. Um, being under lockdown for so long um, has been an interesting experience. Um, it's made me realise that I've got a lot to be grateful for. Not just um, the place that I have to be able to wait out the movement control order, but also the spiritual tools that I've been given in order to deal with it. You know, um, in order to observe, analyse and then protect and nurture my mental health. Um, it, obviously, none of it would have been possible without Rinpoche's um, permission, you know, to have given us all of this over the last so many years. Um, every day now, I think, and I, I observe, you know, the residents of KFR and how they're coping with it, I realise the depth of Rinpoche's wisdom to have encouraged us to move to Bentong, um, to train us to become okay with living out on the boondocks, so far away from civilization. I realized Rinpoche's deep wisdom and compassion um, in 
pushing us, compelling us to become more self-reliant, um, to become satisfied with having less, um, to cut our attachments to going out, running here and there. Um, Malaysians have this term called itchy backside. And you know, Rinpoche, in his deep compassion and wisdom, um, made us learn how to, train us how to settle our itchy backsides so we don't feel the urge to run here and there so much. Um, even Rinpoche rushing, quote unquote rushing, to develop KFR, um, to develop resources for healing, to develop resources for meditation and learning, to input knowledge into so many people so that they can share this information during a time when more and more people need support. Um, none of it would have been possible without Rumchi's kindness and compassion. So that is what I've been extremely grateful for for the last month. Um, the recent passing of His Eminence Drogon Ganchen Rumchi was a shock, um, no doubt. Um, one of the reasons why it affected me, you know, was not just because of Ganchen Rumchi, but also because of our Rumchi. Um, the experience that what, um, of what Ganji Rinpoche's students are going through at the moment is something that um, brought up quite a lot of feelings about our own Rinpoche's passing recently. Um, actually, yes. So that's what I wanted to mention was that, you know, the other thing that I'm very grateful for is um, having this spiritual community here to support and to um, guide one another during these times. Um, I watched Lama Michelle Rinpoche's um, live stream regarding the passing of Drubong Ganja Rinpoche. And uh, during this live stream, Lama Michelle Rinpoche and also Lama Caroline talked about um, the importance of unity and the importance of supporting our Dharma brothers and sisters and the importance of um, staying, yeah, staying united during these times to let petty arguments settle and put petty arguments aside and to focus on the big, bigger picture, which is um, creating the necessary causes to bring our Lama back again. So it brought to mind something else that I'm very grateful for, which is having a spiritual community here um, who behaves and reacts in the same way. It's something that our Rinpoche has been preparing us for and you know, teaching us to do and nurturing us for and encouraging us towards for many, many years. And during this time when <laughs> the residents have no one else to rely on but one another, um, it's nice to have such a supportive spiritual community. No, so what else am I grateful for? I have mentioned that I'm grateful for being um, in KFR. I'm grateful for having the community here. Um, I'm grateful for having had the privilege and merit to spend so much time with Rinpoche for so many years, um, to have been um, given knowledge to protect and to nurture and to um, improve my mental health. Um, and to be able to have the knowledge and the ability to um, convey this information to others. Um, I saw a news report today of uh, our Director General of Health, uh, Dr. Noor Hisham, announcing that um, on Monday, for the first time in over a month, um, there have been no new deaths reported in Malaysia, um, that the number of new cases reported is at 36, which is the lowest since the movement control order is implemented. So all of this would not have been possible without the efforts of the frontline staff, the medical frontliners, um, who are sacrificing their time with their families and um, putting their own lives at risk for everyone else's sake. So a lot of gratitude to them. I'm grateful um, for having a strong body, um, for my health. I have random sicknesses that appear from time to time, uh, which have no known cause. Um, and it's been nearly two years since that's happened. I'm very grateful for that. Um, and also very grateful for Rinpoche having um, put me through a lot of physical, um, bodily purification over the last year, um, which I'm 100% completely convinced is the reason why I haven't fallen sick at all. Um, no colds, no flus, no coughs, nothing. Um, the odd migraine once in a while, but really, you know, that's about it. So why gratitude? Why, what is the importance of gratitude? Why is gratitude so important? Um, for me, gratitude is very important because it helps us to be able to tolerate more. When we recognize how we have been the recipient of 
different people's kindnesses, um, different forms of kindnesses over the years, um, we generate this sense of gratitude for our lives and we are able to overlook what we perceive to be challenges and obstacles. We realize that our lives are actually not that difficult after all and whatever we find to be problems, whatever we find to be issues, become much more easy to overcome and to surmount. When people don't have gratitude, that's when depression sets in. That's when you see the rise of selfishness as a quality in, in someone's actions, someone's thoughts, in someone's speech. Um, when, when there's no gratitude, you see people starting to blame. So I watched a Dharma talk by Rimichi last night. Um, it's called The Blame Game. And in the talk, Rimichi said that we shouldn't blame people. We should never blame people. Why? Because we all make the choices in our lives. We chose to have the partners that we have. We chose to have our husbands. We chose to stay with our wives. We chose to have kids. And since we made all of these decisions, how is it logical for us to blame other people when things go wrong? If we want to blame people um, and if we want to blame others, then what we have to do actually is to put control of our lives entirely in the hands of someone else. We have to give up all autonomy to, some, to another person. We have to give up all independence to another person and let someone else take total control of our lives. Only then can we blame someone else. Why? Because when someone else has total utter control over our lives and they make all the decisions for us, then if things go wrong, then yes, it, it's fair to blame them because they made the decisions. But for the rest of us, um, since we're not in that position, since we do have control over our lives, since we do make the decisions for ourselves, then we shouldn't blame others when things go wrong. We should introspect and analyze the situation to see how things went wrong and how we could have reacted differently. One of the benefits of practicing gratitude, of remembering to be grateful, is that we stop blaming others. Um, we stop holding, we start holding ourselves accountable and we start being responsible for ourselves and for the decisions that we've made and for the state that our life is in. Yes, you know, when we meditate on gratitude, we are able to tolerate and to persevere because we realize that our lives are not that difficult. We realize that um, what we find to be issues and challenges in our life are not that bad. You know, there are many more people who deal with many more things, much more so than us. So when we learn to focus on the small things um, and to be grateful for them, we find that we generate a lot more joy in our own lives. We complain less. And as a result of complaining less, as a result of becoming more joyful, that energy that we then generate radiates out to others. We become somebody that people want to be around. We become somebody that people want to hang out with. We become somebody that people want to love, people want to be kind to, people want to spend time with. Don't you know people in your lives who are always complaining? All they do is complain, 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 complain. And after, you know, it might be fun hanging out with them for a little while, um, going for a yam cha or like brunch with them and complaining and you know, like, bitching, sorry, <laughs> about other people and so on. I mean, yeah, it's fun for a little while. And then after a while, you realize that no, complainers are quite tiring. They are kind of energy suckers. And when you hang around people who practice gratitude, then you find this totally different energy. You find that people who practice gratitude are very joyful. They're very light. They're very happy. And, um, it's nice. It's nice to be around people like that. So instead of looking at people who um, are energy suckers, you know, um, why don't we become people who bring that sense of joy to others? Why don't we become people who um, bring light and bring peace and spread happiness into other people's lives? As tough as our lives may be sometimes, everyone has reasons to be grateful. Grateful that you know, your parents gave birth to you, grateful that you're in a country that is peaceful, that you have a government that's responsible and is taking care of the rakyat. Um, grateful for everyone staying home during the movement control order and being responsible and having a sense of civic responsibility towards one another. Um, so, um, anyway, before this video gets too long, um, I just want to remind everyone to practice gratitude. Even if the movement control order is extended beyond April 28th, um, 
take it on the chin, all right? Be grateful that at least we have a government who is um, doing right by us. At least we have authorities who are trying to protect us. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it's tiring. Yes, it's boring. Yes, itchy backside. Yes, our bank accounts are tragic and upsetting <laughs> at the moment. Yes, all of that. But look, money can be made. Lives can't be replaced, all right? Now that you know we've gone past the one month mark for the movement control order and we appear to only have another six or seven days left to go, um, look back on the last month, last month or so, and um, count your blessings, count the reasons you have to be grateful. Keep that in your mind every day. That is something that JP has been doing on his mindful morning meditations with the participants of that, that program, that session. Uh, which is to share gratitude journals every day, no matter how big or small. Like some people have said that they're grateful. Uh, JP said he's grateful for having strong teeth. You know, um, some people uh, have mentioned that they're grateful for having clean drinking water, um, which is something that billions of people don't have access to, by the way. Um, some people have mentioned that they're grateful for the internet. Some people have mentioned that they're grateful for their kids behaving. Some people have uh, mentioned that they're grateful for their children's teachers um, to have... <laughs> dealt with their children for so many years you know everyone's got their reasons to be grateful and that's something that jp has been guiding everyone to practice um, over the last month so do make time to watch that every day at uh, 8 30 in the morning on the kachar forest retreat facebook fan page to join jp for his mindful morning meditation session um, they are now up to 20 minutes of single pointed meditation in the morning followed by gratitude journal sharings followed by um, about 30 minute sharing from JP on different topics um, he's covered anxiety he's covered anger emotional baggage dealing with loss grief and so on um, and yeah do make time to join that because there are a lot of helpful tips and hints for us a lot of points for us to consider and to contemplate and let's face it <laughs> at the moment we've got plenty of time to be contemplating all right so I'm headed back to to car apartments to um, unpack my drinks um, so that I can offer Sirkim. Super pretty colours. You guys really need to check them out. The Tapping Tapir. Um, they used to supply us as well at Wisdom Hall, uh, at the flea market Wisdom Hall. They used to supply us um, so that people will be able to make Sirkim during the monthly Doji Shukden Council, Doji Shukden Puja. Um, but I've for the first time placed my own personal order from them and I can't wait to open the box. So I'm going to head back to Dukar to do mantra rolling to unpack the box and um, yeah, I guess I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, um, before I forget, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the page and if you have any questions, please leave me a comment at the bottom of this video and I will try to get back to it as soon as possible for you and if you have any ideas for content or things that you would like to see, please let me know. Um, I will be more than happy to film something for you. All right, so fingers crossed, prayers to Doji Shuk then that the movement control order won't be further extended or at least the restrictions will be lifted slightly. But um, I guess that's it from me for now and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.